Champions. This one's going to be a weird review for me, but uh, we're going to talk about Champions. This is available on Peacock, and it may or may not have audio description. And I say may or may not because I've had reports of some people saying that they heard audio description on the alternative, alternate audio track. I never heard audio description, so I don't know if it's a glitch specifically based on how I watch the film, which is possible. It's how I, um, <laughs> it would be the first time. A peacock also makes it almost impossible to complain to them. They don't actually have, like, phone support, and when you go to their service, you complain to chatbots. So, uh, I don't really know that even complaining to them about this is actually an option. So, I don't know what to do. I mean, I tweeted at them, but yeah, hmm, let's see how far that gets me. Um, yeah, I, uh, I did not get audio description when I watched it through a Roku device. I'll say I watched it through Roku. And <laughs> I posted about it, and then a couple people were like, oh no, I saw this in theaters and it had audio description. And I was like, okay, well, and I thought, okay, that's good. It had audio description in theaters. Maybe Peacock is a little late. I watched it, you know, pretty much after it dropped on Peacock. Uh, and then people were like, no, it's working. Uh, I, I checked it. And I was like, what? It's working for you? That doesn't make any sense. I just watched this film, like, a few hours ago. I just watched this. And I flipped between... Uh, track 1 was listed for me as, like, AAC, and Track 2 was listed for me as Dolby. And I flipped between both of them. And I didn't get any others. The other one was listed as Espanol. Espanol. Uh, and that's the only, the only three audio tracks available for, um, champions. So, I watched this without audio description. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I, you know, I'm beholden to the technology provided to me. It wasn't the only thing I watched on Peacock that day. I also watched an episode of The Weakest Link, and it did have audio description. So, audio description was working on Peacock through a Roku device. I've watched many things on Peacock with audio description. I know how to, I know how to turn audio description on and off. Either it, either the audio description is terrible and nobody ever talks, and I kept flipping back and forth, and I kept missing like the one or two times that somebody <laughs> comes in and talks, you know. But because uh, I I kept thinking, okay, well I'll switch, and I'd watch the film for like twenty minutes, and then I'm like. Let's see about the other audio track. And then I switched. I wasn't really that invested in the movie. It's it's an okay film. It's not it's not amazing. Um, it's a very odd duck of a film. It, um, it feels like the kind of film that would normally be uh, aimed at families. You know, like family-friendly, possibly even faith-based. Uh, it's got kind of that vibe of of, uh, you know, fixing your life and learning to be a better person type of thing for Woody Harrelson's character as he plays a, a coach that gets, uh, gets drunk one night and finds himself later in court and is court ordered to do community service by coaching a team of learning disabled basketball players. Um... And that's basically, that's the, the, that's the whole shebang right there. Uh, that's the reason the film exists. Because if we're being honest, there is no other reason for this film to exist. Um, it, simply being disabled does not always make you inspirational. Like, I don't think, I'm not going to get a biopic one day made about me. <laughs> He sat down and he made reviews from his room. <laughs> like, coming. <laughs> coming in 2040, Timothy Chalamet plays John Stark. <laughs> it's, no, it's not. We're not all going to get films made about us. So, uh, these kids, it's, it's weird because it's like you want to feel like it's inspirational because of the kids. 
but the truth is they were already playing basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like they're already, they already exist as a cohesive basketball team. Maybe they get better because they have somebody who formally, you know, who's a professional basketball coach and understands how to maneuver and how to get them to do plays and, and, um, you know, set up posts and run screens and stuff like that. So perhaps that made them better. I don't know that that necessarily warrants a film, though. Um, and uh, it's, I mean, they're from Des Moines, and they got to compete on for, like, the, the regional, you know, North American title for basketball. Uh, that's something. But... I mean, I would assume that happens frequently. I don't know how many times the Special Olympics happens, but I would assume at least as regular as the regular Olympics. So at least every four years, possibly every two, if they have like a winter and summer. So, um, yeah, I just, I mean, and there's got to be teams doing this all the time. So the one thing... The odd, the odd thing is that people are going to show up to this movie because they're going to be like, oh, it's this inspirational story about learning to disabled people, but it's really not. It's a, it's a story about a coach that got drunk and got stuck with a learning disabled basketball team. That's, what, that's why this film exists. And I don't know that that's necessarily the reason for this, like, that we should have made this film. Um, the odd thing is that Woody Harrelson's character in this film is he's trying to work his way back up like he wants to be coaching he doesn't want to be an assistant coach he doesn't want to just so he wants to work his way back up into the into the nba he believes he deserves to be a professional coach that he's good enough so in this things this is slightly a spoiler however, however it is based on a true story so whatever i don't know i don't know how much anybody knows about this guy or his life or whatever but um or when this story happened and uh how big of a news story it was but they act like it was a pretty big news story at the time um he does get offered a chance to move back into an nba team and then there's that question that's raised of the you know that that team is having some internal problems and are they using um his feel-good inspirational story to uh sort of protect themselves in the press to change the narrative, you know, flip the script, so to speak. And it's like, well, isn't that what this film is doing? Uh, isn't this film trying to use the learning disabled aspect to try to make this into something more than it is to try to say that this is some sort of inspirational sports drama when it really is just kind of about a drunk coach um, in the end? at the end of the day, uh, I mean, I wish it was, I wish, I wish I could feel like that this was just a situation where these kids, uh, actually were special enough on their own. You know, I wish that was true, uh, because they're delightful. The actors in this film are amazing. Um, and that part of the film for me was, uh, worked really well, and I loved when we explored each uh, individual personality and uh, everything that they got to do. I would have loved the audio description to be able to hear them play basketball because it seemed like they were kind of funny. Um, one guy, they kept, they were at least they were talking about how he likes to throw it over over his back, like with his back face to the board, and. Um, and try to make the basket that way, and there was a comment about, like, does, has he ever made that shot? No, no. Um, but they all get, like, really excited about it, and it's, it's just, it's, I don't know, they're, they're an endearing group of people. Um, it's not that I'm rooting against them, it's just I recognize sort of the irony in the fact that the film is trying to say something about this NBA team using this coach and as and is hiring as as sort of a, a screen for their problems meanwhile the film is is also kind of using that same coach in order to make this film exist 
Because if that was just some guy, if this was just some random team somewhere of learning disabled kids with some regular coach, you know, would this be a movie? If Woody Harrelson had, if Woody Harrelson's character hadn't previously coached uh, at a professional level before this team, would we be here? Um, you know, it's it's the Mighty Ducks. It's you know, okay, so Gordon Bombay uh, used to play professional hockey, and uh, then he gets sentenced uh, to community service to coach a team of kids. Uh, you know, the difference is that I felt like that. Um, those kids were not really playing hockey before. That was sort of the thing, is that they were actually terrible. Like, legitimately terrible kids <laughs> at hockey. <laughs> and Gordon did actually come in and make them good. Here, I don't know how bad this team actually is. Uh, and whether and how much of an impact he actually makes. So it just sort of makes me go, did we just make a, did we just remake the Mighty Ducks and just... <laughs> In a, in a clever way? I don't know. Um, I have a lot of questions about champions. And I have a lot of questions because, again, the audio description failed me. I don't know that it's going to fail anybody else. But I don't... I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe I live in the uh, Bermuda Triangle now. I, I don't know. But uh, for anybody else out there that... that the audio description doesn't work for them, at least I validate you. <laughs> if, if, if there is anybody else, if it's just me, then I've, I'm, I'm living in the third circle of hell. And it's just, it's just me. It just happened to me. Um, and I, I, I can't explain it because I've used the audio description so many times on Peacock that I, I know how to do it. I know how to turn on, I know how to turn it off. Um, I don't have to navigate it, and, uh, it's, just, <laughs> there, there wasn't any, I don't know what to tell you, there was no, nobody ever talked down there in the audio description, so, um, it, yeah, there's a, there's a subplot here with Caitlin Olsen that is unnecessary, but I guess we needed another adult or a romantic love interest for Woody Harrelson, but I was never really invested in that storyline. Um, and she gets kind of obnoxious too towards the end when she becomes emotionally attached and she gets all upset at, at him for like doing exactly what he said he was going to do the whole time. <laughs> and, uh, and she's the one whose personality changed and, uh, she's like, you know, it's like, okay, so you can't be mad because he's doing exactly what he said and he's also doing what you told him to do. So what, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand women. That's probably why I'm gay. So anyway, um, there you go. I just, I, her character is just unnecessary. Um, but I like the team. I like the, the kids. I like the team. So, um, it's an odd duck for me. This is a film where, uh, I feel, I see it's Rotten Tomato score and it's like bubbling rotten. It's like, it's like bubbling under fresh. It's 58%. Um, I, uh, this is, that's pretty accurate. I mean, I feel like a, somewhere around 60 is probably where I would have guessed this film to be. Um, I'd love to see it in, at 60, though, because I feel there's something weird for me about this film having a rotten score. And, um, I know it can be, it can feel a little like inspirational porn, but there's something to be said for the fact that, um, there's a film that was created that allowed a group of learning disabled actors to portray their own community and portray themselves uh, the way that they wish to be seen. Uh, in the light that they wish to be seen. So, 
I don't know what to do with this film. You know, <laughs> I usually grade film. I usually chastise films for not having audio description, but then people are like, "Oh, it has audio description. It worked for me." I can't. I don't. I can't comment on that. Um, I don't know what to do with Champions. Um, overall, it's it's a decent time. Uh, so I think I'm gonna give Champions a B minus. So. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably where my head's at with that. Um, I can't make fun of the format too much because I do love the Mighty Ducks. It's like one of my favorite things growing up as a kid. And this is basically just the Mighty Ducks, but like with a twist. So, uh, <laughs> you know, there you go. Um, yeah, so check champions out and see if audio description works for you and let me know in the comments anyway um thanks for watching thanks for subscribing i have a website macmovieguy.com you can go to the audio description project adp.acb.org it'll let you know who has audio description what has audio description not who <laughs> it'd be funny if individuals had audio description um or you can watch it and you can follow me on twitter or instagram at mac the movie guy uh, I will review something else for you guys and see you on the other side.